ơn bạn Lê Trúc và Ngọc Mai. Trước khi bắt đầu thì anh xin phép dành một phút không dài dòng để có thể bày tỏ lòng biết ơn chân thành đến ba đối tượng đặc biệt có được không? Và nói của anh là khoảng cảm ơn em và nói của anh khoảng 18 phút có thể tính luôn ngay là 18 phút cũng được. Thì đầu tiên là anh sẽ gửi lời cảm ơn đến bố mẹ. Con cảm ơn bố mẹ vì đã luôn tin tưởng và tạo điều kiện cho con trải nghiệm thất bại và đứng lên sau đó. Và cái đối tượng thứ hai là anh sẽ muốn cảm ơn đến những người bạn. Đầu tiên là người chị gái Thái Thanh vì đã đồng hành với em trong quá trình bình thường hóa thất bại. Tiếp đến là em Thu Trà ở câu lạc bộ Hà Nội Speakers Toastmaster vì Trà đã nói với anh và cho anh biết rằng thất bại có thể truyền cảm hứng cho người khác. Và người bạn thứ ba sẽ là em Đức Anh tại câu lạc bộ cũng là câu lạc bộ Hà Nội Speakers Toastmaster vì em đã là một cái tấm gương và một động lực cho sự kiên cường và lý trí. Em hữu sĩ tại Think On vì bạn này đã yêu cầu anh kể thêm về thất bại nên là anh có cơ hội để trải lòng qua các trang blog và có cơ hội chia sẻ ngày hôm nay. Và cái đối tượng cuối cùng, đối tượng thứ ba sẽ là những anh hùng cũng như là những cái nữ anh hùng gọi là thầm lặng của ban tổ chức TEDx Hanu. Đầu tiên là em Tú Anh vì đã dõi theo hành trình của anh và đọc bài blog về thất bại của anh. Sau đấy sẽ là em Châu Anh, Việt Dương, Bích Vân vì đã góp ý cho bài nói của anh. Và cuối cùng là em Thùy Linh, An An và các bạn khác có thể là anh chưa biết tên hoặc là chưa tiếp xúc trực tiếp vì đã góp phần tạo nên trải nghiệm đáng nhớ cho anh, cho các diễn giả khác và tất cả mọi người ở đây. Ok, cho anh hôm nay còn còn uh, chuyển sai cho anh nữa thì làm rất cảm ơn cho anh. Ok, anh sẽ bắt đầu bài nói bằng tiếng Anh. Good afternoon everyone. I have something to admit. I am a crazily stubborn person because I have a crush, a crush that has been pondering my mind for nine years. I am Hill, a hospitality student, and thanks to the nature of my major, I have worked in different corners of the world. But life is not all rainbows and butterflies, isn't it? In 2017, I had a break with living abroad and returned to Vietnam. And there were times when I felt desperate for a change of scenery. Then I applied for wisely with the hope to travel for free and to validate myself. For those who are unfamiliar, Wisely is a fully funded exchange program to the US and you have to select one study theme to join the program, environment, entrepreneurship, and civic engagement. I apply for environment as I have been living a green lifestyle. And during this process, I was so stressed and obsessed. You know, I went on coffee dates with friends and scarily, scarily asked them to call the embassy to inquire about the result for me. I was so afraid I would be disqualified immediately if I called too many times. And even worse, I had a dream that I received an email from the program officer saying, you are not an impressive candidate at all because you only have some echo bricks at home. After that email, a few weeks later, I received the result, which is, a rejection email. But then I decided to reapply to a new theme for the second time, which is entrepreneurship, because I want to start a restaurant in the future. And long story short, I failed again with no given reasons. I felt sad, unfair and hopeless, but a friend of mine got accepted to the program and up in her return from the trip, she told me that the exchange program focused more on field trips, cultural activities, and the study wasn't in depth in theory. And after that, after hearing from my friends, my emotion changed drastically from sad and bitter to grateful and accepted because I realized that I wasn't the most suitable candidate. I knew later that the returners of the program, they were environment majors and they had impactful large scale projects. My emotions also change from a shame to completely fine because what I mainly wanted to do is to acquire in-depth knowledge on entrepreneurship, not cultural exchange. And this wisely is just a puzzle of a bigger picture. I apply for wisely not only with the hope to get out of Vietnam and to validate myself, but also to polish my image 
in front of my nine-year crush. Okay, it's not what you think. I had a crush on a university called Cornell. I've been dying to get accepted into the school when I knew the school is unique with a teaching hotel, an adventurous curriculum and proud traditions. And my road to Cornell is like training to join the Boston Marathon. And for those who are not runners, you have to complete a 42 kilometer run in three hours to join the marathon. Therefore, it is, definitely, it is definitely not for any curious mind because consistency matters. And for the past nine years, I told myself to run every single mile, every single kilometer I could to reach my dream. And this is my running log. In Ted Holiday, I clean tables, work 12 hours daily, serving rich clients and exploring distinctive aspects of hospitality. And when the heat of Hanoi summer arrived, I attended study abroad seminars, admiring and cheering people's success. During mid autumn festival, when you can feel the cool breeze and smell fragrance of milk flowers, I sacrificed family time in exchange for extracurricular activities. And finally, when Santa Claus is coming to town, I scroll college forums and social media, stalking alumni and getting admission counselor attention. And throughout these years, throughout this process, I spend days and nights facing sleep disorders, questioning my worth, crying and suffering from that I am not good enough syndrome. So every show must come to an end, right? As season came and passed, the day of judgment finally arrived. As you can see from the slide, I stay up until 2 a.m. just to open the result email. And it is written, we sincerely regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to Cornell University. Yes, it was a rejection email. It was a third rejection email. My nine-year crush turned me down. My nine year dream exploded in just a snap. I called my friends and cried. I became speechless. My mind went confused and blank. And I was so afraid to come down for breakfast and tell my parents the result the following day. I wonder if I was stubborn, obstinate, selfish with that nine year, with, with that nine -year crush. Am I hurting myself? Am I hurting my parents for all those years of venturing out of school and graduating late? Have you ever wondered the same thing as I did when you felt that something that you put so much time and effort into? And when that, dream, when that dream just slipped through your fingers, did you feel like a loser just like me? Am I wrong for chasing the things that I cannot see? This question popped my head ever since I failed Cornell. However, days after, I look back at my journey to Cornell and I realized that at least I had the courage to apply to such a tough school when last year the school received more than 70,000 applications. Many people didn't apply because they thought the school is too hard, it's out there rich, or they simply didn't want to prepare an awful lot of application materials. They didn't want to prepare many activities, a good uh, grade point average, a good IL score, all of those application materials. So people were curious and they asked me, how did I embrace and normalize my failure? In other words, how did I get over my failed crush? And this is the answer. I got over my crush with a saw. And I'm pretty sure that there may be one or two horror movie, movie addicts in this room, but no, I didn't come to the university and murder the admission committee with a saw like in the Saw horror movie. With each letter, S-A-W, saw has a personal meaning. Firstly, the S, I maintain a healthy self-esteem. I learned not to doubt and tell myself that you are a failure, you are not good enough. But instead, I patted myself on the back and I told myself, Hill, you are brave for getting it done. So you can tell 
the first letter, the S means self-esteem. Secondly, the A, I chose to be authentic. I journaled out about those three rejections and I realized that I wasn't authentic. For wisely first time, I wasn't authentic with myself. Imagine, should I apply when I am just a member, a sole family member living a green lifestyle? Or should I apply if I have an environmental project that impacts many people? Which one will you choose? I am only authentic when I realize that I am a suitable candidate. If I pour enough of my heart, discipline, dedication, and determination into the project. And for wisely the second time, I wasn't authentic with my motivation. Imagine, should I apply because I wanted to get out of Vietnam? Or should I apply because I really want to learn more about entrepreneurship to start a restaurant? I am only authentic when I realize that whatever I embark on supports my long-term aspirations, not my short-term craving. And for Cornell, I wrote in my application that I long for a holistic education where I can be challenged academically, professionally, and personally. Therefore, my final destination should not be Cornell, but instead, it should be a valuable degree. Then of course, there are hundreds of universities for me to choose from. And that is the A, the second piece of the saw, which is authentic city. And with self-esteem, the S, and authentic city, the A, I brought back peace in my soul. Then you might wonder what is next. It's time to go from the inside to the outside. The last piece of the saw is W. I welcome and accepted those failures completely so I can be courageous and move forward with a new action plan. A friend of mine told me, why sell your Cornell? It's not now only means it's not now. And that's true. I am not the best fit for Wiseley yet. I submitted an application to Cornell that I am yet to feel 200% proud of. I welcome and accepted those facts. So I could move on. Very simple. I move on and I apply for other school. I got admitted to an amazing institution in Las Vegas and I am loving it so far. Going back to this question, am I wrong for chasing the things that I cannot see? Now, I can confidently say that I am not wrong because you are never wrong to do the things that feel true to you. And something feels true gives you inner peace. And at the same time, that joy of being challenged. Remember, it's a joy, not a rush of adrenaline. The joy that energizes you and gives you a crystal clear awareness of your worth, the joy that leads you to the role of betterment, no matter success or failure, the joy that protects your soul because you will never have to look back and tell yourself, I wish this or what if. And this is my message to everybody in this room. In a world that is constantly trying to change you, where achievements, titles, fame, figures are heavily valued. Failure seems shameful and unacceptable. And getting over a, a fail crush or getting over a failure takes a lot of time and courage, that's for sure. However, it is all happening just inside our head. Then why don't we redefine failure as this? Failure is unavoidable feelings that can at first bring negativity, but later on, it can bring positive changes if you embrace and normalize it. I embrace and normalize my failure with a saw. And after all, I have something to admit to all of you. I am a crazily passionate person because I know that it is not the end for me and my naive crush. Shouldn't failure be the new normal now? You redefine failure, you embrace failure, you normalize it, and tell me about it. Thank you. Cảm ơn bạn MC. Anh nói xong.